So let me just highlight you, Scholastic, so we can see you properly. There we go. Okay. So hi, everyone. Welcome uh, to our Get Inspired series. My name is Jennifer. I am the community leader for Ecom Connect, which is for those of you who are popping in for the first time and are new here, it is a community that is um, and a program that is organized by the International Trade Center um, and the United Nations. <clears throat> and we support um, e-commerce entrepreneurs in developing and least developed countries just to learn um, skills around e-commerce, around networking, and just, um, yeah, it's just a really nice supportive community where we learn together, we connect, we build our networks, and uh, we meet incredible entrepreneurs like Scholastic who we have with us today. Um, so we're going to dive right in. Scholastic is a PR um, fashion expert, and she has a really inspiring story. We met actually in another community a few weeks ago, and I just felt that her story was so inspiring that it would be a great opportunity to have a conversation with her here in the community. And if you're not part of the community yet, um, I'm going to put the link in the chat. You can sign up to join us. It's completely free. Um, and we have so many wonderful events happening every week. And um, the recordings are also always put in the community after. So if ever you weren't able to join something, you can rewatch. So we are recording this one now. So Scholastic, welcome. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so, so much for having me here. I have to say I'm a bit nervous, but I'm uh, super excited. <laughs> well, I mean, it's like a big family here. So it's very casual, very relaxed. And uh, we're just going to have a nice, friendly and inspiring conversation. Um, so can you tell us first, um, so you're in Pennsylvania right now, but tell us where you're from and how you landed in Pennsylvania. Um, yeah, so first of all, thank you all for being here. It's definitely an honor and a privilege, and I don't take any of this for granted. I think everything is happening, and it's perfect timing. Um, so a lot of people, um, you know, know, may not be aware, I'm a refugee from the Democratic Republic of Congo, um, but I was born in Kapsabit, Kenya. Um, so for anyone here, I do speak Swahili. I no longer speak uh, French and a thousand of the other dialects, but that's a story in itself. <laughs> um, and, you know, I was very privileged to have lived, um, you know, what I looked at at the time, a complex and unfortunate life, right? Um, because, you know, a lot of people see one thing, but don't really realize the experiences or where your background from, where you're coming from. So, you know, being being able to migrate from different countries as a young child and having the privilege for uh, to come to the United States. And, you know, just to kind of backtrack, I was telling my mom two days ago in a car, I said, mom, can you tell me a little bit more about the United Nations? And she's like, oh, no, you're going to have to pay me for my story. <laughs> like You're my mom. <laughs> Uh, but then she's like, no, I, she said, I just, she's like, I remember like it was just yesterday. She says the United Nations that help us do your pay, our paperwork to be able to come here, to be able to live the life that I'm fortunate to live today. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, backtrack on that. So coming here, you know, when you're an immigrant or when you're a refugee, you have a vision of what the American dream looks like for you and how you're supposed to you know, integrate in this new society. And then these expectations of you, you know, not just learning how to assimilate and integrate, but also trying to figure out who you are as a human being. Um, and at the time, um, I've always been interested in arts and fashion and theater and all these things, right? But life at the time did not allow me the privilege to live within my dreams and within what my brain told me was possible. So like many people, I just kind of went along with life, but always keeping in mind that I had these visions, I had these dreams, and I don't know where they came from. Um, you know, I joke around a lot. I think I was telling you, Jennifer, I'm like, imagine what it's like being a one-year-old, a two-year-old, a three-year-old living, you know, in certain situations. You know, I spent a year and a half living 
um, in Addis Ababa, uh, in a desert, right? And experiences where, you know, I almost lost my sister, my grandfather, and watching my mom still being very passionate and taking care of people and, you know, on the refugee camp and just being youthful and, you know, just this happy woman. And I don't know if that's where my dream started, but I don't remember those experiences. But what I do remember is that despite of those circumstances, I've always had a bright and positive impact in life. And I get this from the scenarios that I, as a child, drew up in my mind to escape a lot of these situations, you know, where my mother can talk about it. I've only heard about it, but I don't remember experiencing it. Um, and I think that's gave me the privilege of, you know, being a dreamer and knowing how to, you know, I'm, this is the first time I've told my story. So I just, <laughs> yes, uh, you know, let that, that, let that be known. Of course. But regardless of how I grew up and my background, I just knew that I could do anything. And, you know, I'm that rose <laughs> that people would say grew from concrete because I always looked at my circumstances as, hmm, for some reason, okay, I'm going through this, but this is not it, you know? And that's what allowed me to go to college, to be able to pursue fashion as a career and even in moments of my life where I did fall back again, and I saw myself almost jumping into what we consider what generational poverty and these curses, right? You know, and that, you know, and that's when I had at this, you know, later on in life where I experienced a lot of things. I just knew that as long as I could dream, I could get out of any situation. And that's what inspired me to open up my PR firm. Mm -hmm. It wasn't because things were going great in that I was making a lot of money and that, you know, people were calling me to work with me left and right because none of these things were true. If anything, I have found myself in a path where I have got, I was getting to a point of success and then I fell right back down. And it's almost as if I was reliving my childhood in a new space. And in that moment, I said to myself, what, what, when I was a kid, how did I get myself out of these spaces? You know, I may not have money now. And this is me in my thirties. I didn't have any money. Mm. I was living with my mother. <clears throat> I closed down my first business that I had opened. I was running a salon and I was about to expand it and it was going great. I was working with Cardi B and little Uzi Bird. And, you know, at the time my mentor Maggie Francois was traveling with her. Wow. Um, I was living a dream life and in the midst of my dream life, the carpet just got pulled underneath me and I had mm. to learn how to survive again. Mm. And I found myself getting food stamps, 31 years old, applying for a job. I was making $13 an hour after just having my own business, like, and dehumanizing myself. And when I said to myself, you know, I've lost everything. Couldn't get mm. any more than this. <laughs> and I sat there and even in the midst of me losing everything, I prayed a lot. Um, I journaled a lot. I hated my life in the midst of all of this. But then again, I remembered I've had a worse, like I've, I've had a worse one day. Like, I don't know. I just knew I had it worse and it, this wasn't it. And I knew that I can rise from that as well. And I surrendered everything. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I had a conversation, you know, I don't know what any of y'all believe in, but I believe in God. And I, and I told God, if you can bring my family here, you know, it's not, it's not, it's rare that you can be in a situation that I was in and have the opportunity to come to the United States. That's a rare opportunity. And mm -hmm. I said, God, if you can give my grandfather the strength to bring our family here to build our life out of nothing, then you can give me the strength to get up and rebuild my life into something. Mm -hmm. And I quit everything. I, and it's, I could talk about it now because it's, it, it inspires me and I quit everything. Right. I let go of my, 
twenty dollars an hour job. I had got for, I went from thirteen to twenty dollars. So I was I was doing big things now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> big jump up. <laughs> big yeah. jump up, right? I mean, and yeah. I just kind of let life happen to me, and I made the decision that I was just going to trust myself, trust my trust my understanding and who I was, and trust that God did not give up on me, and He will never give up on me. But I just mm. had to make a decision to get up and to do what I knew was best for my life. And I tell you within making that decision, I landed my first five figure contract in three months wow. of making decision that I was going to get out of my situation in three months. And then right after that, we launched a course and in 15 minutes, I sold a class for $700 in 15 minutes. Wow. And I said, oh God, you working. Cause I don't <laughs> I said, okay, I'm paying attention now. I'm paying yeah. attention, you know. So, you yeah. know, I say all of that, you know, and I think, you know, that was a lot, but I say all of that to kind of give you guys an idea of where I came from and where I am right, right now and what this, you know, PR firm means to me. Yeah. There's so many things that you said that I want to highlight that are that are just so powerful. First of all how wonderful is this moment this full circle moment of the un helping you to to come into the us and now you being interviewed under the umbrella of the un i just think that that is absolutely incredible um i didn't even know that actually that was something i just learning right now and um the other thing i want to highlight that you said and i think this is so important because there's there's always two parts to success right there's like the technical practical practical things that we um, need to learn to run a business but then there's the energetic and mindset piece right and what you said is like when you realize this is where i am now but it's not the end that realization that that way of seeing where you're at is so powerful because it's empowering you to have access to so much more you know and to be ready to access so much more opportunities, success, growth, whatever that is. Um, so I really love that you that you highlighted that. And I think your story is one of um, really big inspiration for how, um, how we can create opportunities for ourselves when we have the right mindset in business. Um, so one of the things I wanted to talk about today with the community, because you're, you started the PR business and things kind of grew pretty quickly for you. You know, like I don't, I'm not a big believer in like overnight success because business requires work, right? We're always working with, if, whether it's with like our mindset or like actually doing practical things to grow our business, but you had a pretty quick turnaround. What would you say is the thing you did consistently that allowed you to make these connections, uh, grow the business, um, and just keep moving forward along your journey? Um, I think for me, the aha moment was when I really stopped focusing on the things that I wasn't really good at, right? Mm. I think a part of society, you know, part of growing up in society is that we're programmed to always want to learn this and to be better and to, you know, these things are great, but sometimes we're so caught up in learning things that we're not even paying attention to what we're just naturally good at, that we can just, you, you know, figure out what we're naturally good at and enhance those skills instead of trying to force ourselves to be good at something else because we think it'll make our lives better or so forth, right? And that, and when I went through my period when I was pregnant, you know, when I was pregnant and um, going through my transitional phase, the one thing I said is, okay, I don't know what I want to do with my life. Everything I've done has failed. Nothing has worked out for me. So what if I put down every single thing that I suck at and said that I was never going to do it again, right? And then I made a list of everything that I was really, really, really good at. And then I was going to figure out how can I enhance those skills that I'm good at? Because what I've learned is it's those things that we're naturally good at that is within us, is internal, it's deeper, it's surface level, right? 
And in order for you to get in touch and to understand these things, you have to do the work. You have to sit there and say, okay, why am I good at this? Why am I not good at this? Maybe it's something that's connected to the, your childhood, you know, or maybe it's something can, and to be honest, it's usually always connected to your childhood. <laughs> what I've discovered. And I think that shift allowed me, because remember I had pivoted in a, uh, I had went from a place where I don't know where Jen is. I think she's still there. Ooh. I'm still here. Just there needed we go. To, to, to manage a little something. I'm still here. <laughs> okay. I figured you were, but I had uh, pivoted from a space where uh, I was trying to get back into my legal field because as a kid, I thought I wanted to be a, uh, well, not as a kid, as an adult, listening to my parents, I was like, I'm going to be an immigration judge. So I started transitioning back into that while I was pregnant. I went and got my paralegal certificate. I was working at a top law firm, like all these crazy things. And then I realized that I was really bad at my job. That's why I kept getting fired. It didn't matter that I had a certification. <laughs> it didn't matter. I really sucked at what I was doing. I sucked so much that at my last job, my, the person that hired me said, wow, maybe you should consider changing career fields. She said, you're not good at this at all. Imagine somebody telling me, this was during the clock. And I'm just like, I think I'm going to get fired again soon. <laughs> and I, and I did, <laughs> but what I what, what made me so successful, because when I made that pivot, I made intentional day, day in and day after to make, write down the skills, write why I was good at. I even called people, Hey girl, what do you think about this? Do you think I'll, people will tell me, no, you're horrible at that. And my friends would be like, but you're great at this. And that is when I realized that I had to open up a PR firm. I'm an amazing publicist. <laughs> and, and I think that that was that sudden pivot. And, and just to let you guys know, just to backtrack, Jennifer, sorry. Um, amazing publicist in a way that I tracked all my years of everything that I've ever done and why I was good at it and why it worked out for me. And when I did those, that was 12, 10 years of my career in the fashion industry. Once I made that list, that's how I knew this was my career and I couldn't do anything else. That's really incredible and really important in business because I often talk about the 80-20 rule and how important it is um, when you're a business owner. And the 80-20 rule is about where, because we often do the opposite. We often put our efforts in 80% of the things and we get 20% results. Instead, we should be putting our efforts into 20% of the most important and powerful things to get 80% results. And that 20% is generally related to um, what you're really good at, what, I, what we call your zone of genius, and what creates the biggest impact or the biggest return on investment, ROI, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important. Um, and I actually just did this exercise this morning because um, I'm preparing to hire on my team and for those of you who um, might be inspired to, to make this shift, uh, as Scholastic is saying, to focus on where you're really good at um, and hire out or get support or help somehow for the, for the rest of it, we have a recording in Ecom Connect on how to hire an online team that we did a few months ago that was really great. But one of the things I did this morning was um, I, I created a spreadsheet and I mapped out all of the things that are happening in my business right now, all of the activities, all of the tasks that are currently mostly 80% in my hands. And I made a category for each role that I saw was needed in my business and a category for me. And I plugged all of those tasks into who should be taking care of them, which also means what I should not be taking care of anymore. And when I got to the end of my list, I had like th three items out of like 80 that were in my column, like three. And I was like, oh my goodness, why am I doing all this other stuff? This is not where my business growth is, you know? So um, I really love that you brought that up. And I think it's a great practice for all business owners to do. Get really clear on what you do well and ask people ask your friends, ask your past clients, ask people who have been in contact with you because they, they see it easier than you do a hundred percent. 
and yeah, and, and uh, I was gonna say, you know what's so funny to add to that, Ariella, who's on the line. When yeah. I went to tell her, like, I finally made my list. These are all the things I'm good at. Now I got to figure out what this career is called. She's like, it's called PR. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yes. That's a good point also, because we sometimes we know our skills, but we don't know what we're supposed to be doing with it. Or, and sometimes it requires even a business model shift because we're not necessarily doing the right thing or selling the right thing. So I love that Ariella highlighted that. That's great. That's great. So how long have you been doing the PR? Like you're doing it full time now, right? Yes. Okay. How long have you been doing it for full time? Uh, so I've only been doing this full time. We started in September of last year. This wow. is April. That's incredible. <laughs> and, and I'm talking about, I just went, I put a plan down based on what I'm good at. I figured out who was going to do the things that I'm not good at. And the one thing I encourage people to do, especially minority owned businesses is because we get in the habit of opening businesses. And like you said, we're trying to do everything and we're just not even great at half of it I made sure that every time I wrote a contract or anything that I put in money I budgeted money in there for a consultant to do everything that I knew I wasn't capable of doing so then that automatically allowed me space to outsource without digging into the pocket that needed to pay the bills and you know yes take, take the bills Yes, that's so important also, because I think oftentimes, and I often encourage people to reverse engineer the process and, and think about, okay, well, how much money do you need to make per month in your business so that it's profitable and that it pays for your lifestyle? And when we do that, we can often quickly see that the products that we're selling are either not priced um, properly, or maybe there's another a product or service that we could be selling that would be much more profitable that would allow us to reach our goals and when you when you get clear on the support that you do need outside of your expertise building that into the cost is so so important i agree absolutely yeah um what would you say so i'd love to know two things one what have been your biggest successes so far um since you've been doing that, since you started your PR agency and what have been the biggest struggles? Um, I think for me, my basic, biggest success, and it just has to do with my entire life was just the ability to be, to learn how to make a decision. And I think that's something we take for granted because every time I'm always asking people, what do you think I should do? You know, what do you think I should, you know, price this for? What do you, you know, all, some of these questions are great when you're, you know, coming up with your business plan. But if you don't start saying, well, this is what I need to do, regardless of whether it may succeed or whether it might fail, it doesn't matter. Just make a decision. Because for me, that's what's held me back for so long in my career. I remember I came to the point where I was so undecisive that I freely let go of my career and just started hiding behind other people in their businesses because I didn't want to decide. Deciding gave me anxiety and I didn't want the idea of possibly failing. So when I learned how to make decisions, I'm able to work quicker. I'm able to go based on my first ideas, which is usually the best ideas because it's a stink, you know, you go by your instinct and I'm not overthinking it. Um, and it also allowed me to be at peace with my failures because that was another thing. I'm a over, I, you know, a lot of us, especially when you're coming from other backgrounds, immigrants, uh, or whatnot, where a lot of us are overachievers, regardless if we're, you know, African immigrant or, you know, immigrant from Central America, it doesn't matter. It's like that thing that has been instilled in us that when we come to the US that we need to, you know, we, we gotta be perfect, we can't fail, we gotta keep going and we gotta have this perception. And when I allowed myself to fail, <laughs> it just became easier. It became, okay, this didn't work out. All right, back to the drawing board. Like that's, that was it. And it was like, why didn't it work out? 
okay, it didn't work out because I didn't do this. I, and it's usually because of us. <laughs> Instead right. of four, it was, I'm not going to do that because it's not going to work out. I can't. So yeah. I think that would be the biggest success for me was the ability to learn how to decide. In terms of um, the biggest failures, I'm at the point in my life, like I said, I don't, I don't believe in failures. I believe what you would call a failure is just God's opportunity to teach you something. And either you're going to pay attention and learn, or you're going to be ignorant and walk away from it and then go make the same decision for the rest of your life and then complain and say, oh, life is this, <laughs> right? And yeah. I think <laughs> having the privilege to be from so many different backgrounds uh, has taught me that, you know, whether you're, I'm a refugee, so I've had it the worst of the worst. And I grew up in the ghetto in some of the most improvised areas where I've had it the worst as well. And in each situation I rose, right? And that means in each situation you can rise too, but you have to decide and you have to be willing to fail. There's no in between. Yeah. I love though how your biggest um, win was your biggest challenge before, because essentially what you're saying is your biggest challenge was the decision making, and then that became your biggest um, success or win or a celebration. And I agree. I mean, I, I I believe that failure is probably the best opportunities for learning. It's 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 just a little pause to help us see some information that's going to help us continue to step forward. And a lot of people stay stuck in fear of making a mistake or failure or even just things getting a little bit messy. Yeah. And one of the things in business, I think one of the skills we need to have is, is resilience and the capacity to take certain risks. And uh, a business coach that um, I've been following for a, a really long time often says, uh, clarity comes from engagement. So um, we need to we need to take action to get clarity. We need to do something to see, well, did this work? Is this the right path? Is there another path? And oftentimes um, every single step forward, whether it was the perfect one or not, brings us closer to the answer that we were looking for. So I love that. That's yeah. really great. And can I add that too, even um, not only the answers that we're looking for, mm -hmm. I feel like it also allows you to be honest with yourself, you know, as business yeah. owners, you know, we want to, especially with social media, everyone wants to pretend like their business is doing this. Let's be honest. Business is hard. It is. It is. It is. <laughs> it is. And you have to be willing to be honest with yourself, your team members, your employees, your employers, your support mm -hmm. systems it humanizes you and it decreases the level of stress when dealing with these things. Yeah. And I love what, what you were saying about humanizing us because oftentimes we're worried or scared to talk about where we're struggling or where things are hard because we think that everybody else has got it together. And uh, you, like you said, the journey of, of business is, is difficult. It's messy. It's, but it's also equally exciting and expansive and full of opportunities. So um, I think that's, yeah, that's definitely a really, really good point. And I know that you have a lot of passion around giving back and the impact that you're making through your work. I know that when we were speaking last time, you were just, yeah, you were just very passionate about um, giving back in your own way. Can you tell us a little bit about your vision for the impact that you want to make or um, yeah, just anything around that, that, that feels relevant? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, uh, my life has been built on a foundation of giving back because I wouldn't have been here if, you know, someone didn't give back back to us. You know, we were fortunate that the Lutheran Church here in the United States and D.C. sponsored our family to, you know, get here. Unfortunately, everyone couldn't come. But, you know, imagine the people who donated, the volunteers, the people when we, you know, when we arrived to the United States not knowing English, and all these, you know, we've never seen so many white people, you know, <laughs> at the time <laughs> and just welcoming us and taking care of us and helping us integrate. Um, you know, you don't forget about those. And even, um, you know, as a, you know, I'm in a more AmeriCorps member. I remember even when I didn't have anything, for some reason, I felt like I had enough and I, I wanted to dedicate my time to help other, you know, other people. 
And I think for me, you know, it's not only that, it's also been rooted in how I've seen people being treated in my whole life. You know, sometimes I always tell people it's, it's hard being a black person because you're already at the bottom of the ladder when it comes to societal standards, right? Especially when you're a woman of color and you look like this, right? Your hair is not what society calls acceptable. Um, and I look like this because I decided to not do what society calls acceptable because I realized that in my journey of life, it was the people who were fearless and the people who stood up for themselves and the people who had a voice. These people were, you know, you would consider them rebels, but these are the people that inspired me. You know, they taught me how to speak up. They taught me, you know, because as an immigrant, you're not, you know, a lot of us, you're taught to be quiet and to be um, passive, you know, you can't be loud, especially if you're a woman of color, the louder you are, the more ghetto you seem. Um, so, you know, you're trained a certain way as a child. Um, but even when I was observing, you know, I think we were talking um, last time, Jennifer, I was telling you about, so I used to, I was a babysitter uh, when I was 11, 10, 11 years old. I used to leave, I was in Riverdale, Maryland. I never even told nobody, like for my friends didn't know. I used to leave Riverdale, Maryland, commute about two hours to go to Potomac, Maryland to watch this, these families' kids. They were wealthy family members. Um, and I remember the experience being there because I used to see how their nannies were, you know, the nannies were treated. A lot of the nannies were undocumented. They were from Central America. They didn't speak English. They weren't treated right. Um, I, you know, I witnessed a lot of things in there and I just knew that I never wanted to treat anybody like that, regardless of their background, what kind of language they spoke and how they look, because as a kid, it made me feel bad. So imagine how they feel experiencing these things. Um, and, you know, that's where I kind of rooted the foundation of my PR agency was just that I always, I feel like as a, when you're a minority or when you're placed in a situation, when you're disenfranchise or whatever terms you want to use and you can and you elevate from that I think is important for us to be able to tell our stories in ways that can impact and change other people's lives you know because I felt like by me sharing my story and me working with um um you know people that look like me and saying hey this is you know you, you can if you could tell these stories and even though it's rooted from the not so beautiful experiences, there's beauty in these moments, right? There's beauty in growing up in Southeast DC. You may not, you know, you, 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 there's beauty in that. You're, you know, if you see how the kids are on a way dress, if you see us, you know, rapping in a cafeteria, like all these beautiful things. And society shows you that there isn't any beauty in these. And we, or, you know, all these, all these, I could talk about it forever, but <laughs> I always just felt like it was my job within, especially with my PR agency, is to work with businesses, to work with people, to work with creatives who want to tell stories, but who want to tell truthful stories from situations and experiences that make a difference, not just to, hey, I have a business. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Impacting through their voice. I love this. I love this. Yeah, um, and that's how I use, uh, and I'm sorry. Oh, um, yeah, I use, uh, you know, I work with emerging designers who yeah. uh, want to get their brand out there. And I tell beautiful stories through campaign shoots, to collaborations with music videos, through, you know, movies and making sure that the things that people are creating and the stories that they want to put out there are being portrayed the right way. Yeah, I think you really have a gift for um, seeing the opportunity in every single moment and every single experience and every single interaction. And um, it's just really inspiring how you just stumbled onto this path, you know, and to this business that ended up being, you know, the vehicle that really um, aligned you with, I think, your, your life's greatest work. And um, I'm curious to hear now where do you see yourself going next? What are the next steps for your PR agency? 
Um, I'm going to produce some of the most beautiful fashion shows and campaigns. Nice. <laughs> I that that's the dream, you know. I I was a writer as a kid. I wrote poetry. I sung. I I've told stories my whole life, and I remember mm. when I was. 13 years old, leaving my job in uh, Chevy Chase, Maryland. And I walked into the uh, Jimmy Choo store and I sat there and I watched the entire runway show up and down that screen. And I said, wow, one day I'm going to be doing that, you know? Mm. Um, but in a way that celebrates my <clears throat> cultures and people and unifies. And I think I, I am open to what the universe is going to send to me and what God has for me. And I no longer place barriers or I, I live, I live my life in surrender. Yeah. I can tell you guys the things that I hope to do and want to do in my dreams and I, you know, all these amazing things. But if God does not direct me in that way, I'm not going. Mm. Biggest lesson I've learned is that when you surrender and you spend time with yourself and you really learn what God or what role, whatever spiritual force plays in your life, you won't be confused. You're not going to overwork yourself. You're going to have an abundance. An mm. abundance. And God revealed all of this to me at my lowest points. Right. But I had to be at my lowest point to get that message. Otherwise, I would have never heard it. And I hope that regardless of what point that any of you all are in, you know, just remember that embrace this point, hmm. feel the pain. You have to feel the pain. We live in a society that wants us to mask the pain. You have to yeah. feel it because until you feel that pain, you're going to keep making those same mistakes over and over again. And then let right. life direct you where it needs to go. So I, Jennifer, I cannot, like, I cannot wait. I, I'm so excited because I know it's going, wherever I'm going, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah, I have no doubt. Just seeing how your path has so organically unfolded so far. I think that you are absolutely on your way to big, beautiful expansion. And I love that you have this vision of bringing, you know, everyone along the journey with you. So that's really great. Um, I'd love to open up the room to some questions um, to see if anybody wants to pick your brain a little bit more on some things that you said, or maybe ask some questions that I haven't asked yet today. So if you um, have a question for Scholastic, you can either um, just unmute yourself and um, ask your question, or you can pop your question into the chat. And uh, we'll just open up the room to talk a little bit more with everybody. It takes people a few minutes. Oh, let me just put my gallery view on so I can see everybody here. Um, does anybody have a question for Scholastic? Let's see. I'm going to go through the comments in the meantime. Oh, um, while we're waiting, um, funny yeah. story. <laughs> yes. Um, so the reason I always tell people this, I think it's hilarious. So the reason why I'm such a good publicist, and I say this because I'm such a cute girl, but so growing up around the way, I used to fight a lot. Like <laughs> I'm a friend and I was so tiny. I'm like this small Kenyan girl. <laughs> And I'm like, don't mess with my friends. And I just wanted to yeah. keep anybody up. And then I was like, one day, you know, when life happened and all that crazy stuff, realizing I'm like, I really know how to take up for people. Mm, yes. <laughs> and protect and defend and to make people feel good. So yeah. that's a way where you can use some of your uh, not so greatest things as a kid to kind of unveil what some of the great skills that it can help you in your business. Yeah, I, you know, I think that's such a good point um, because at the end of the day, sometimes like I, for me, what I see in that is you, you, there's been a common thread in your intention through your whole journey, which was to uplift and protect others. Because even when you spoke about wanting, thinking about becoming a lawyer, 
you know, and even now the, the larger impact that you want to create through your business and helping minorities and people who don't necessarily have a voice, it's always coming back to the same common thread, which is to protect and uplift others. And so I love, I love that story. And yes, yeah, sometimes when we start stepping into our life purpose or our mission or the work we're here to do as business owners, it, it starts some, sometimes a little bit messy, right? We're a little bit awkward in how we do it. And now you're, you're doing it through such a powerful channel. So I love that. I love that. Oh, Shara. Shara says, what a great interview, such an inspiration. I'm interested in how do you keep yourself grounded and focused when you find yourself getting distracted or off track? This is usually something people struggle with in entrepreneurship. A hundred percent, Shara. <laughs> what are your tricks for this, um, Scholastic? Well, two things. Um, and hi, Shara. <laughs> Um, well, I think for me, the first thing I want to encourage everyone is to um, learn how to be alone. Yeah. Um, that was the hardest thing for me. Um, and it still is. It's, it takes intentional practice. Mm -hmm. But it's, you have to spend time alone. And I'm not just talking, people say 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there. That's great. But I, I literally have, even as a mom, I have days where I do 24 hour, I don't talk to nobody. I won't even talk to my son. I'll go to a hotel room and I'll just sit there and I don't have plans other than to be alone and to spend time with me. Mm -hmm. Because what that allows me to do is it gives me the space to check in with myself and to see how do I feel um, right. about these things and to just do like an emotional, hey, hey there, hey mom, you're, are you okay? <laughs> Yeah. Um, so that's the biggest thing. Solitude, embrace it and focus, um, especially as creatives. I, when you are creative, we tend to have so many ideas, especially visionaries. I'm a visionary. So my ideas never stop. Ari Yellow right. tell you like, she's like, okay, can you stop? I'm like, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, what I found, Shara, in focusing is that I've learned that there's a time where I can't be a businesswoman and I just have to focus on fixing things in my life. And I have to be okay with that, which is really, really difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are times where I have the space to, you know, be that businesswoman that I, you know, I'm I, in my life, but I have to do one thing at a time. As many as ideas as I have, you know, right now my focus is on building Style Sense, which is an educational course for creatives uh, that we teach online, um, and the PR firm. I can't do anything else. Yeah. So once I focus and meet those objectives and I give my space, I give my time to then take a break, focus, I mean, take a break, have mental space, and then into the next project. So okay. that's helped me a lot. Yeah, I think it's it's very easy as entrepreneurs because we wear a lot of hats to just get pulled in by all the obligations coming at us. Um, and getting that alone focus time is definitely, definitely really important. Um, I see, I'm, I'm going to just simultaneously um, launch a little poll. It's just a few questions if you guys can answer while we're doing the Q&A time. Uh, it just helps us to know more about how you liked the sessions and what we can do more for you. So I'm gonna just hit launch because I always forget at the end. So while I'm thinking about it, um, Elisar, did you wanna ask a question? I see you uh, turn on your video. No, okay. <laughs> it's nice to see people on video. Um, I just- Much better, but I wasn't uh, putting on video for the connection. Uh, I know. Stop your connection. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, you're welcome. What she was saying in the comments, congratulations. How inspiring, very inspiring story. Yeah. Oh, thank you all. And there, you know, oh, go ahead. Sorry, Jennifer. I was just gonna say, ask if there was any other questions. But go ahead. They we can pop unmute or pop in the chat. Go ahead while we're waiting. Okay. While while we're talking about e-commerce, I just want to let everyone know that of course my business service based. So um, especially when you're in different countries, if you service-based businesses um, are a great way, especially if you can't produce, if you don't have the funds or means to, um, you know, produce certain things that you may have uh, an idea for. 
Um, and what I learned that everything that you're good at, somebody wishes they knew how to do. Mm -hmm. So you can find a way to tap into those skills. Maybe you're really good at making something that you can sell online as a course while you raise money to potentially be able to fund those items physically. You yeah. know, these are ways that you can you could tap into the online creative space and save a lot of money while you're building your business. So I just want to add yeah. that out there. Yeah, I agree. I think we need to become, um, actually, I'm in a coaching program right now, and they tell us all the time that first and foremost, you're a marketer, then you're the business owner of the thing that you're doing. And when you, when you learn to be a marketer first, you, you allow yourself um, a space to be problem solving all the time and thinking about solutions and seeing how you can fund your way forward in your dreams. So I love that. Oh, someone's popping back in. I think connection went out. Okay. Oh. Uh, uh, Kamal Deep says, thank you for that tip. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Welcome. And I just put my uh, LSR. I'm sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly. Um, so my uh, website is there and that's dot co. Yeah. Um, so we're going to have the recording in Ecom Connect. Uh, we put it in two places in the community. One in the events section, if you go to past events, you will see this event in, in the bottom of the description. We're going to put the recording there. And then we also have a section um, in the community um, for videos. And we have all of our video recordings in there. So if you haven't joined us already in the community, please come over. We've got lots of great resources and tools and support there for you. Um, and Scholastic, uh, Martin says, Scholastic, thank you. Beautiful story told with pure honesty. I will connect as per your email. I agree. I agree. We need more honest, authentic, real stories like this, because this is what allows us to feel human and to de-dramatize maybe what we're currently going through and to know that there's always a next step forward towards our success. So thank you so much for sharing your story. It was really nice having you here. Thank you, Jennifer, for allowing me the space. Like I said, this was definitely the first time I've ever shared my story. So it's definitely an honor. And I, I hope it you know continues to inspire anyone else out there. Yeah, absolutely. You're very welcome, Elisar. So wishing everybody a really wonderful end of day, no matter where you are in the world. And hopefully we'll see you on the other side in the community. Oh, let me put my ID. Oh, sure. Okay. Yes. Add me. Happy effort is not it's my personal. So have good have fun with me on IG. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. All so right, everyone. You're so welcome. And thank you again, Scholastic, for, for spending time with us this morning. Thanks. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.